If I were asked to choose a villain from the whole history of this country, it would not be Benedict Arnold, nor would it be communist conspirators, nor would it be spies for the Nazis, because those, for, except for Arnold, most of those people were fairly impotent, did not have power to do anything. But Hoover, because he had power for, for such a long period of time, because it was wantonly exercised, because it was exercised with spite, without a touch of judgment or any sense of justice, because it was willful and capricious, because it made a mockery of our Constitution, don't cut. I mean, you know, we've, we've cut by saying that, of course, so right. cut. We're running. Yeah. yeah. I, I can't get over Hoover ever. For all the years of my life, all these long years, he was in command of, uh, for most of them until he died in 1972. But for many of the years of my life, he ran the secret police of my country. And there are isolated fragments of Hoover that still stick to me. In the days of the Rosenberg case, he pushed and pushed. He wanted Ethel Rosenberg to be electrocuted. Now, I'm not a psychoanalyst, as my wife is. I'm not interested in, in doing psychoanalytical history. But yet it disturbed me at the time, and it still disturbs me, that the head of the secret police of this big country would be so passionate a Rosenberg woman go to the chair. Uh, the U.S. attorney did not want that. In fact, people thought the whole case could get blown because of that, but he pushed very hard. I won't surmise why. <laughs>